G'day everyone and welcome to another episode of Fix It In Post. Um, now well, today we're just going to look over a very very simple tutorial about how to create bursting sun rays um, as requested by uh, Kavalenko200. Um, it says how do you make the rays in the background? Well you know what that's actually quite true. I did do that last tutorial and I didn't explain how to do those rays. I just showed you how to cut numbers up in After Effects which you know I didn't really have time to and I just planning to do it and I thought, well, that could just be another tutorial. Yay, and more money more money for me if I get more views. Anyway, not a big deal. I was just going to do it anyway, but this will be a short one. Um, but yeah, uh, I just want to uh, point your attention to a friend of mine who's doing also a um, film project called Tales of Nailstone, which is, um, which is a film that he's working on, um, a 3D film, I think. Um, he's doing a whole bunch of tests and stuff here, but quite ambitious and he's doing it with his mate Jerome and it looks pretty cool. So I want you guys to have a look at that page. It's talesandnailstone.com. He also has a website too with a whole bunch of tutorials in Maya and After Effects as well. So go check out his stuff. It's really cool. Anyway, I will go back to the tutorial because this is why you are here. So the first thing you need to do, and I'll show you what we're going to create today, is these uh, exploding rays and um, the spinning, the spinning rays as well. Also take note that the um, the way the rays sort of come out one by one rather than just coming out at one time. We can sh I can show you how to do it coming out at one time, but I don't think that'd be, be as interesting. I thought this would be a lot cooler. So um, obviously couldn't call it Kung Fu Panda, had to call it Fighting Panda because that's just the way I just the way I roll to avoid copyright. But whatever, let's just get started, shall we? Let's go for a new composition. Here we go, bursting rays. Um, now. Here is a fairly important step. So if you don't have, if you don't already have your title safe on, because how can you tell the center of the screen? Turn it on. Um, it's right here underneath the 50% view thingy and in between this, I don't know if you can see, you can see you've got eyes. Um, here we go, we'll turn it on. And now let's grab the pen tool and we're gonna draw ourselves a little arrow. So what we'll do is we'll just start on the edges of the screen here, like so, and try and get as close as you can to this crosshair, like so. And you can see that little arrow is getting drawn and we'll just finish that off. And there you go. Not bad, not bad. Now, um, it's really important for you to get as close to that crosshair as possible. Um, it's okay if you mess it up, you can actually just readjust that point. So if, say for example, if you, you know, if you moved it here, you can just move it back. Anyway, not important. It's, it's just, it is a quite an important step for you to make sure that that crosshair that that tip is in that crosshair because that will affect the way that the, ray, the rays come out. Um, so, shape tools if you haven't used them before, really great, very versatile. It's basically like drawing with vectors in um, in After Effects directly and um, rather than having to go to Illustrator, design stuff and then bring it in. I find it a lot easier to just design. It has some limitations, but if you know what those limitations are, you should be fine and you only need to jump into uh, Illustrator when you need to do that vector stuff. But anyway, but that's completely scalable, really great. So here we go. We're going to put this thing called the repeater. Now, as you can see here, there's one, two, three shapes in here. That's because of the repeater. So what we're going to do is let's pull down the repeater and let's go down to the transform section here. I'll just show you real quickly. So in the repeater, there is, you pull that down, there's a transform section. So right now everything's offset by a hundred uh, pixels. So you can see that. Um, so what we're going to, what we're going to do is reduce that to zero. This is under the repeater section. So I just want to, just want to point something out. The, the repeater has a pull down menu and under that pull down menu is a transform menu. And this is different from the other transform menu, which is, um, separate to that repeater. So don't go into that one, go into this one here. It's very important because this is where you need to work your magic a little bit. So we go down here into that transform of the repeater and we're going to rotate it and then you'll see a few rays pop out. Now the only reason there's only three at the moment um, and they're all separated by 14 degrees. So it's about 14 degrees between each of these bits and pieces. So the reason why there's only three is because you've only got three copies and that's again under the repeater. So let's make a few more. Let's say, oh, I think it was about 27. No, that's probably too many. It looks like you can see overlap a little bit. So just whenever you see it roughly finished. So 26 is probably about right. Now, um, let's go back. We'll pull, we'll twirl up the repeater. And as you can see here, it doesn't quite fill the screen on the edges there. So that's an issue. 
I'm just going to save real quick. Um, now what we can do is because it's completely scalable, like I said before, you can just scale it up and you won't lose any resolution. So that's the good thing about that. Um, we'll twirl that up. Now, the first thing you got to do is actually set a couple keyframes for the scale of the item. Cause I'll show you what I mean. If you wanted to start from zero, if you go, if you wanted to start from zero, you could just, um, Basically, let's just go scale to scale. You could do that whole thing where it's just like, it starts from zero and just goes whoop, whoop. You get the idea. That's not very interesting. Um, in my version, it actually pops out one at a time, which I think is a little bit more interesting. So let's try and figure that out. Now, the one thing you got to realize is when you use the repeater though, is it doesn't seem to do anything to the actual and uh, original thing. So when you scale everything down, which I'll show you in a sec, What's really cool, oh, I think, am I in the right one? No, I'm in the wrong one, I'm in the transform one. Just told you, I gave you a whole lecture about not getting into the transform of the actual one, and I go into it myself. Um, all right, here we go. So if we go scale down, you can see this little kind of shell pattern, kind of the snail shell pattern kind of occurs, which is kind of cool, is what you want. Now, the problem with this is if we go down to zero, the original one is still there. So what we need to do is actually go to the, pull up the repeater, and this is confusing, Go to the repeater and actually make this, um, we'll set a keyframe, probably about six frames here. And we'll go back and we'll make this zero. So what happens is it'll actually scale up the first one. Let's make it about five frames actually. And then what we'll go is we'll go into the repeater and scale the rest of them up. So we'll make that go for about a second and go to 100%. All right, so zoom and you can see the rest of them start following and bam okay so that's one thing that's really weird about this repeater thing and this is i've just noticed this is that it kind of gets gradually faster and faster towards the end so at the point it's like one two three four five six seven and i don't bam and i don't like that so what i tend to do is put a little bit of an easy ease frame in i used to use i use easy ease in just to kind of slow it down slightly towards the end it's just a little bit nicer so if we just look at this animation right now you'll see that it just goes zoom, which is not bad. I think that's actually quite a respectable kind of animation. All right, now for making it twirl, you could just, you know, do the rotation, set a keyframe here, set a keyframe here and go blah, and then that would be the end of it, right? But say you wanted to make the composition a bit longer. Now you could be a sucker and do that, or you can use expressions. Now expressions are not that scary. You just gotta know what to type. All right, so we'll alt click on the rotation and we'll type time, which makes the rotation whatever the time is. So at the moment it's at zero. Um, and then, so I'll show what happens. So basically it'll just take on the value, the rotation will just take on the value of the time. So it'll rotate very slowly because to be honest, it's only, you can see here it's only two degrees. I was just pointing at the screen thinking that you can see me, but you can't. Um, it rotates two degrees, three degrees, four degrees, you know, it's not really gonna turn very much. So what we need to do is increase the multiplier of that time. Now, I usually like to pick something like 60 um, to get the motion going. So it should go even faster. So woo. So now it's 60 times whatever that number is. So it's like 60 degrees. It's actually turned 60 degrees in one second. So that's pretty quick and that's what we want. So you can see you're getting mesmerized. Woo, very exciting. Um, and that essentially is the crux of all that I'm doing. Um, now, if you just want to make it a little bit cooler, I would just put a uh, new solid just to make the background jazzed up a little bit more. I'm just going to save it. And here we go. Now let's make a black vignette or vignetti as my friend Dave Ruby likes to call it. Um, you know, industry terms and whatnot. Um, okay. And we'll just draw a mask around this solid. Uh, I'm not using a shape tool. Uh, solids and shape tools are completely different. So you can't really do feathering masks in uh, shape tools. Ah, uh, yeah, for some reason. It's real weird. I wish you could, but apparently you can't. You can't even mask them, which I found quite odd. Anyway, um, and I'll just, you know, I've inverted that. I'm just going to pull the opacity down just a bit, just to give it, actually, I'm going to put it on all top of the whole thing. So it gives it a bit of, whoa, look at that. And if you just grab the fighting panda that we had before, maybe I'll cover that in another tutorial. It's like, whoa, fighting panda. 
And there you have it. That's pretty much the tutorial. Anyway, hope you've learned something today. Um, the Finding Panda. All right, look, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a bonus round and we'll do the Finding Panda. So it's pretty easy to design this and I'm going on and on about how you can actually make this, um, this guy in After Effects so easily. Um, it will take me, I'll draw this so quick. So let's go. Bam. I'll show you how quickly I can do this. Uh, we'll do the circle. That's his face. All right. Then we'll also do um, his eyes. So, and I'll switch that to black. So that'll go black. You have to do it in this very particular order because, well, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> and this is nose. And we'll do his ears, although it will be against black. So it probably will not look very good. And that was a bung ear. Anyway, I'm just doing this for the sake of time. All right, I'm going to draw his mouth. And then we're going to do his eyes and change that to white. Oops, and I'll draw a circle again. And I'll draw another eye in here for him. And black. And I'll draw another black in here. And we'll do the highlights in his pupils. We'll make that white. I know, you're thinking, how does he do this? But this is what I do. This is what I do, baby. All right, and let's draw the inside of his mouth. Oh, I'm trying to cheat in here a little bit, so apologize if you think I'm some sort of master genius when I'm really not. And that essentially is, um, well, I actually put him in three layers and I should have done it in one, but whatever. We could all, all sync it up to the one picture. And if we just replace Fighting Panda here, with and we'll hit this up to that null and what we'll do is it's a bit different I, I don't like I don't like this panda as much as I like the other one <laughs> but whatever oops zero and keyframe assistant easy is in wham how'd you like them apples finding panda he's a he's a bit wonky we gotta fix him up a little bit here here we go finding panda Wow. How'd you like that? Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I'm going to post some more toots uh, probably sometime next week, or at least one toot, hopefully next week or the week after. So um, I'll keep you posted, and hopefully it won't take very long to do. All right, see you soon.